I don't know. I'll get you kind of loosened up so you don't hate me so much. One more. One more. A woman. Got to be a woman. We're, we're racist here. Only want women picking songs. We're, it's a, a civil right that woman. Got to be on my right side. Yes, ma'am. 91? 91? Did you mean that? Are you on some kind of drugs? Or? I'll take some what she's got. That, can we do it? I want to. What? I said, I'll take some what she's got. <laughs> oh, let's do it. Stand up, y'all. Stand up. So if you don't like it, that's not hard. You can take it up with me if you want. But I'm not going to tolerate some of what you want to say. I mean, I'll listen to you, but right is right. It, it, here's, let me tell you what thrills me. It thrills me for someone to hear the gospel and they've never heard it before and they think, man, wow, really? But I also get thrilled by someone who's saved and hears something they've never heard before. That's, that's also, man. And, and it's kind of... I, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, you should know this. But they don't. But it's thrilling to tell them and look at the, the look in their face and they express to me what well, a blessing it is to them. Luke chapter 8, I'm going to do what you're not supposed to do. I'm going to preach a sermon like I preach Sunday morning. You're not supposed to do that. Somebody said, Luke chapter 8, verse 5, look at it, you know the story, so you're going to be tempted not to look at it closely, and I would caution you, don't do that. Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 8, verse 1, a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, the fowls of the air devoured it, that's what? Got it? You there yet? Huh? 
the bells go off. One out of four. First one, wayside. Okay? This means nothing to the message. But I've had a busy day, and I've got to put in a lot of fillers. So I'm going to walk real slow to the Lord. Hey, I'm kidding. That's one. Number two, verse six. And some fell upon the rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. That's number two. Rock. You with me? Am I going slow enough? Say your writing's awful. Didn't ask you about that. Verse 7, and some fell among thorns. There's three. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Doing this for you. Thorns. Say, you all just write all those, save yourself. I didn't get to exercise today, so I'm counting this. Verse 8, and other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried. He cried, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Must be important. He cried. Must have been important. So you and I know, because you just read it, you're here Sunday, you heard it in the morning. I'm just going to put good. I know that's low. That helped. You didn't know I was that strong, did you? One out of four. Wayside, rock, thorns, good. Did anything grow in the wayside? Come on. No. Anything grow in the rock? No. no. Anything grow in the thorn? No. no. Just in the good. So one out of four. One out of four. He's not talking about, it's talking about ground. It's talking about the same person. So the effect of God's word on people is usually one out of four. And I would venture to say less. Let me finish verse 9. His disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but others, to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my, Jesus said, my word shall never pass away. Kind of important, isn't it? The Bible's important, isn't it? Yeah. Bible's important, isn't it? Yeah. So it's important that it lands in the right place. Because if it lands on the wayside, it doesn't grow. If it lands on the rock, it doesn't grow. If it lands on the thorns, it doesn't grow. It only, it only grows when it lands on good ground. He said, now the parable is this, verse 11, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside... Are they that hear, then come of the devil, and take away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved? Verse 13, they and the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word with joy. Did you ever hear something made you happy? I know a lot of people are going, man, just what I need. Where are they? Where are they? They come to me, oh, pastor, I want to serve God. You know what I want to tell them? you got to be here to serve God. Right. Look at me. Look at me. It scares me. These people are sincere. And they don't realize how strong the devil is. He has plotted your destruction. They have, verse 13, they're in a rock of they when they hear receive the word with joy. And they have, these have no root for a while, believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they, 
which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit. No fruit. See it? No fruit to perfection. Verse 15, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and a good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Pray with me. Father, this is so important. You know it. I know it. If I, God, could figure out any other way to communicate this, I would do it. So the best thing that could happen is that the Spirit of God would anoint me and bless me and use me and fill me and lead me that at least the word will be delivered like it ought to. But everyone out here has the option whether they're good ground or not. Speak and change our life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That, that's not my point. I'm not going to spend time on, on that which is not productive. I'm going to spend time on the one that's productive. If you want to waste God's word, go ahead. If you want to waste your life, go ahead. Let me tell you what I think is incredible. You know what we as Christians thrive on? That God speaks to us. I don't hear him audibly but I know this is his word. Amen. And it thrills me that he wants to speak to me personally. That's so simplistic, isn't it? I love, I, it's a compliment to me when people go, you know, you're just so simple. Like, you're dumb. They don't want to say dumb or stupid. I've met a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of people. And every time I meet one of these intellects, or these people that think they're a good Christian or a fancy Christian or a formal Christian or a Pharisee Christian, I've never been impressed. Never. Never. They seem so shallow. That's what this is. Shallow. We don't say, oh, you don't listen to the word. No, they do, but it doesn't do anything to them. John 10 and verse 27, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Jesus wants to have a relationship with us that's personal. They don't want a group relationship. Don't, don't raise your hand. Don't, 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 don't. Did you pray today? God didn't have trouble hearing you if there's more than two of you talking to him. He treated you like you're the only one talking to him. I don't go to God and go, hey, you got a minute? I don't go to God and go, I, I know you're busy. I think God loves it when we come to him. I think when I kneel early in the morning and I bring my three lists to God, I think God goes, oh boy. I do. Not because it's me. He didn't say, good to see thee too. He loves the fact that I want a relationship with him. He loves the fact that I'm interceding, praying for others. He loves the fact that I would think that he can do something about it. He loves the fact that I would spend time, him and I alone. 
I don't share him. My phone is not with me. If you call, sorry. Most of you, if you die, you'll go to heaven. You don't need me for that. Call me afterwards. I promise I'll show up for your funeral. When I meet with God, you need that more than anything. You need me to have a relationship with God. Hello? Let me say this hasn't been said in a while. I'm getting old. I could croak. Somebody could shoot me. I could get mad and leave. You better make sure if you pick a new guy, you pick right. Somebody's going to come in and dazzle you with a sermon they preach 124 times. And you're going to go, that's the guy we need. You know how many times I hear this? You know how many times I talk to deacons and people from churches? They go, this guy came in, we thought he was better than he was. He comes in and man, he's all slick. He's got everything laid out. And, and, and a lot of these guys, they're in their fourth or fifth church. They said, Pastor, we, we thought, we thought. And I always say, well, did you get a pastor to help you? Because they smell better than sheep do. Well, no, we figured we could handle it. Well, that didn't work for you. Listen to me. Listen to me very closely. If I was you, and I was interviewing a pastor, I would ask him to bring in his prayer list. We always go, preach a sermon, brother, and he preaches a sermon that he's memorized and everything is dramatic. And we go, that's the guy we need. And nine out of ten of those guys end up being flops because they don't have a personal, that's the hard part. Any, look, God could use a donkey to preach. You're going to find someone who knows God, who spends time with God, and I'm here to tell you, that one out of four people don't know God like they should. They don't know God like, and I'm telling you, pastors don't know God like they should. They put on a show, they breeze by, they do the work, they get everything done, they accomplish this and that, but they don't really know God. When, when my wife calls me on the phone, I don't have to ask who it is. I know her voice. God know your voice. Or you want to, yeah, here he is again. He's in trouble. Yeah, here she is again. Her husband's giving her a rough time. It'd be better to keep up with God, wouldn't it? Amen. And I've learned and learning. You've got to keep your ears tuned to God. God told Abraham to offer Isaac. I would have said, that's the devil. That's the devil. I would have said, that's the devil. God told me that I was going to have a boy, and I've had him. Why would he want me to kill him? That cannot be God. You realize Abraham was so in tune with God, he knew it was God. He didn't hesitate. He said, God will get up first thing in the morning and head out. God said, good, as you're going, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you where, you where you're going. And, and Abraham said, where, where are you? Number one. Number one. I want to use these to make my points and be done. Number one. You might be the kind of person, you might fall into this category where you hear it. He's not talking about someone who won't hear. He's not talking about someone who does the, the word of God in, in just in the wind. No, he threw it and it fell. And this is a person, number one, the wayside, who hears and the words go. You know what your wife hates? When she tells you something and then you say, huh? You know what she knows? You're not listening. Hello? And we do that to God all the time. The Bible says somewhere, God has a desire to speak to me. And you have to be careful that you can't let 
the, 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 the ground, if you will, the ground of your heart to become trampled so the seed can't even have a chance to grow. Don't let your heart get hard. People that are in sin have a hard heart. You can't make up your mind about what you're going to do. You've got to let the Word of God sink in. And he's saying, no, this guy hears it. He's got pride. He can't concentrate. They think they got it all figured out. They've got fear. They don't concentrate. God could tell me something that, that I don't want to do, and he could tell me to do it, and I, I'm not going to do it because I, I don't want to fail. That's not your business. Your business is, if God says it, is to say, yes, sir. Notice he says in verse 15, it's an honest and a good heart. You've got to be honest. If there's something in the way, you've got to be honest. Never allow, I want to make this point, never allow any other person to block your relationship to God. Be it your husband, your wife, your, your mom, your dad, your children, nobody. Girlfriends, how many times have I seen girlfriends and boyfriends distract good kids away from God? Hello, amen, amen, preacher, amen. Number two, you might be the kind of person that hears and then it's gone. Number two, you might be the kind of person that hears, but it's on a rock, it doesn't go deep. I call that here and shallow. You hear, and then it doesn't go deep. You, you are there, yeah, you may like what you've heard, but in your own life, you and I have to take time to hear God. I, I don't know what you do, but I, I have to slow down and be quiet, and I have to plan God time into my schedule. Or else it doesn't go deep enough. We schedule everything else in life. I had to get my teeth cleaned yesterday. I hate it. She's standing right there, and I said, you know what? I hate dental hygienists. I figured she's going to hurt me anyway, so why is she going to get more mad? Scrape, scrape, scrape. So pretty soon she goes, you know what? You did very well this time. You have great hygiene. I said, I brush like nobody. When I brush, it's an all-out war. Some of you go. I bend toothbrushes. I break toothbrushes. I just go at it. I figure I'm going to brush better. Listen to me. Look at me. For the glory of God. And then that rotten good-for-nothing hygienist said this. How do you come in on your flossing? I said, I don't use the F word. <laughs> if you don't schedule time with God, all he'll get is leftovers. Hey, you know, they call me. They send me cards. Six months, time for cleaning. I'll go, already? You know, I don't look forward to it. Hey, only five more months. Only four more months. Scrape, 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 scrape. Then they dig down in your gums to see if you fall. It's like, why don't you just rake that thing across my tongue? Why don't you just poke me in the eye with it? Hey, when you and I meet with God, because we live such a hurried lifestyle, we have to wait. Verse 15 says, that we can bring forth fruit with patience. I want God to speak to me when I want him to speak to me. And you know what he tells me? I'll speak to you when I want to speak to you. You just keep on, hold on. I want God to speak and you say, yeah, me too. Can he do it quick? We listen like that. We get excited, but it doesn't last. I've got people all the time get excited about a message, but they haven't done anything about it. Why is it that the seed is always good, but we don't change? 
They didn't see. They say you remember 10% of what you hear, you remember 20% of what you read, and you remember 80% of what you see and do. You know what would make us a better Christian? If all of us were living a life that showed Christ, we'd see it more and we'd remember it more. But that's all been watered down. We need to practice what we hear. It amazes me that people can go to church year after year and never change. Verse 13, he says, They on the rock are they, which when they hear receive the word with joy. These have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. You know, you can be excited about the word without being changed by it. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. Enthusiasm isn't enough to make your Christian life what it ought to be. It's going to take commitment. It takes commitment. Listen to me. It takes commitment to meet with God daily. It takes commitment to read His Word and study and understand it. And so you've got to think about how your life can live this out and review what you hear, meditate, mull it over, think it through. God can't talk to us unless we slow down. Number three. Thorns, I call that hearing and being distracted. God doesn't want us to waste our life. God doesn't want us to let anything push him out of our life. Nothing wrong with pleasure. Nothing wrong with fun. But, even though God wants you and I to enjoy life, he doesn't want us to get so busy having fun that we forget him. Yes, hello. Hello. I walked through my grass today. My neighbor got home. He got rained out. White Sox got rained out. So I saw he'd come home for the day. So I ran over there and said, hey, I want to shake your hand before you're famous. When you won't acknowledge me. And we talked a little bit. And, and I walked back and I thought, man, my grass needs mowing. And then I saw weeds growing. You know what weeds are a sign of? Neglect. I've neglected my lawn all winter. I've neglected the weeds. Hey, weeds grow in your life when you neglect your life. Number four, we've got to do this when it stops. He tells us what we need to do is hear it, keep it, and be fruitful. Now watch me. Watch me. Stay with me. Everybody in this room wants God to talk to them. If I, if I came to you one by one and said, do you want God to talk to you? Hey, hey, you want God to talk to you? Yeah. All of us would agree, I, I preach, I want God to talk to me. But here's what you can't do. You can't decide if you'll do what he says. You can't say, hey, you know, if I don't like what he says, I'm not doing it. That, that's why he won't talk to you, because he knows you won't do it anyway. So you have to just give in and go look. An honest, verse 15, an honest and good heart. An honest. Hey, when you read the Bible, are you willing to do whatever God says? I was talking to somebody recently, and uh, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm up there in age. They were almost my age. But I said, you know what? I am willing to do whatever God wants me to do. If God wants me to go somewhere else, I'm going. I don't care where in the world he wants me to go. I don't care how far north, south, east. I, it, I've learned that what God wants me to do is the very best. I'm willing to do it. And then after I said it, I thought, man, that's a mouthful. God knows when you read his word if you're going to do it. You don't. Maybe you do. When you and I read the word, it ought to be with a willing mind. Think over what you've heard. And as you let it soak in and you think it over, it'll result in fruit. You don't grow just by showing up for church. You don't grow because you open your Bible. You grow because you hear it, you keep it. 
and then it becomes fruitful. Because you've decided you're going to do it. Let me tell you the bad news. The moment you walk out this door tonight, the devil's going to do everything he can to distract you and steal what you've just heard. That's why we have invitations. That's why on Wednesday we pray and stop. Often, not every time, often we ask you to raise your hand. We ask you to make a choice. You see, it doesn't matter what you hear. It matters what you do as a result of what you hear. He said, our Lord said many times to people, will you also go away? They just heard him preach. They just heard him tell the truth like they never hear it. And he said, will you also go away? Don't waste what you hear. One out of four. Oh, I'm, I'm not the other three. I'm that one. All right. You sure? You, you better work on that. Pray with me. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Dear Lord, help us to be honest. Help us to be so honest that we say, I'm not going to waste what I've heard. I'm going to keep it. You, you said, you, you grab it. Hold, don't let it go. Keep it. You said when you do that, it produces fruit. Lord, if you're speaking to someone tonight, May they be honest enough tonight to say, I see something I need to do. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Preacher, pray for me. I see something I need to do. Put them up, put them up, put them up. God speak to you, put them up. Heads bowed, eyes closed. God speak to me. God speak to me. I want to be the one out of four. I don't want to be the three out of four. I want to be the one out of four. I want the word of God as he says it. When you in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. Keep it. And bring forth fruit with patience. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep it. You say, preacher, I haven't raised my hand, but pray for me. God speak to my heart. Up and down. 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 God speak to my heart, preacher. Dear Father, please help us to hear your word and keep it. Help us to read it. Help us to uh, hunger for it. Help us to have the hunger that would cause Zacchaeus to climb a tree. Bless us, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your patience with us. Help us to be patient as we hear your word and keep it so that we are fruitful. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.